my friend. Oh. There you go. Okay, so this fan <laughs> film uh, has generated sixteen hours a long. Ton, no, sixteen minutes. This fan film has generated a lot of buzz. So here, here's what happened. So this guy, let me give you his name real quick. I think his name is Star Wars Theory. Yeah, Star Wars Theory is his channel. That's and, not his uh, real name. Well, that's his channel name, buddy. You don't know his parents. You don't know. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Theory? Yeah, yeah, I do. Star Wars Theory. His first has, name is uh, Charles, not Star Wars. Has posted a video. It is called Vader Episode 1 Shards of the Past, a Star Wars theory fan film. Okay, so this uh, has nearly 6 million downloads in like, I don't know, a week, week and a half, something like that. So mm-hmm. it's downloads generated views. Uh, views. So this has generated a a ton of buzz around it, and uh, um, apparently this guy spent a hundred thousand dollars putting this thing together. <coughs> and uh, with the success that he is seeing on this, they're putting together a, a, another fundraiser, and they're trying to raise another quarter mil to make the rest of this guy's uh, episodes, I guess, as part of this. And uh, the reason I I feel like that this has generated a lot of buzz is because well. You know, over the past year, there's been a lot of, I don't know, infighting, I guess, in the fan community. Wait, 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 wait. What, what, what? There's wait, no trouble community? in paradise. Star Wars? <laughs> Star Wars there's community? There's no trouble in paradise. No. I know. What? 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 You're anyway, crazy. I feel like that uh, with uh, all the things that have transpired <laughs> over the last 12 months, this actually has been kind of a bright spot, at least in my opinion, because this seemed out of nowhere <clears throat> to really kind of bring the fan base kind of back together. Remember when and... we used to get fan films all yes. the freaking time? Yes, all the time. Yes. Half the time it's like, oh, hey, it's we're we're a couple of Asian brothers and we went out in the woods and we rotoscoped lightsabers onto sticks. <laughs> and we're like, this is the best thing ever. You know? Well, you know what? The weird thing is, is that, I mean, these fan films have existed this whole time. I mean, there's still people doing them. Yeah. But, you know, why did this one gain so much traction and, you know, and others not? And, um, you know, and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, again. Because you know, it does some of the same stuff that the Vader comic did. That's yes, why. You're right. Yes. Yeah. It's actually very it, it well done. It was very similar to the Vader comic. I mean, yeah. Is it? I mean, in yes, terms... Yes, it very it, is, like, eerily similar. All right. So, for you guys that have, have watched it, I yeah. mean, is this... I'm trying to think... Did you not watch him, Mike? I have watched it. (laughs) You (laughs) told me over three different types of media (laughs) to watch it. I've watched it. It's freaking sure. But I'm trying to ask you guys a question now. I I can't, I personally can't think of a better fan film than this. Whoa, 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 whoa. Star Wars The Last Hope is a level of art. Oh, I'm sorry. That you cannot ascend, my friend. <laughs> pee on hope. this. You can't beat R2 saying pee on this. You know what you really you know you really can't beat is you can you can find behind the scenes blooper a blooper reel for that. Really? Of that video? Of that video. Oh. And that's pretty funny too. Oh wow. <laughs> we, we gotta do that after we record. That's so meta that I'm just breaking right now. A booby. I'm breaking like Harvey Corman over here. <laughs> wow. Okay, the so death-tickle. I do stand corrected. Giant hurt ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So something that's not in the genre of comedy. <laughs> Oh, non-comedy. Oh. Non-comedy. Mm. Something that takes itself half serious. Mm. I don't know. I mean, what what did you guys think, Garrick? What did you think, man, when you saw this? I mean, what was your uh, what was your impression? Yeah, there's some parts that were off <laughs> to me, like Vader uh, was a little bit weird. But I mean, it's a fan film. But the story was pretty intriguing, especially yeah. near the end, uh, where he gets sent to. Uh, they don't tell you who he's after but it was uh interesting to see who that might be i guess yeah um, but there was a, there's a lot of cool dialogue between vader yes. and the emperor yes and uh i you know it did seem a lot like in the comic where you know vader hates the emperor and the emperor is like hey if you want to be a true sith you got to kill me at some point right and he, you can kind of in the in, in the fan film you see like the emperor still has Vader on a leash and Vader's still this like little kid who is not going to buck authority or whatever. But yeah, um, I, I personally I enjoyed it. I personally so love the that. visuals were amazing, though, for like, a fan. Yeah, film, yeah they were the, pretty the good. effects yeah, and the sound film. editing were were about as good as you could uh, as good as you could hope for. Really? Yeah. Um, you know, the the set scale 
some of well the scale of some of the yeah snacks. we were talking about the the throne room felt kind of claustrophobic a little bit claustrophobic <laughs> a little empty they had their little triangle wall sconce and stuff like yeah. that but I mean that's not going to take away from... No, it, it really didn't for me. I mean... No, if anything, what you're saying is going, this doesn't look like a professional movie. Uh, yeah, well, you know yeah, what I mean? Right. But, you, I mean, but then you go, oh, wait, this is a fan film. This is really good yeah, for a fan film. Right, yeah. How yeah. are you going to put this together? Exactly. Right. right. Um, the costumes were great. Yeah. Uh, you know, they they got kind of a guy that's kind of a quasi lookalike to play Palpatine. He did good. Yeah. I think there was someone else doing the voice. They were leaning into it kind of hard, but it was pretty yeah. good. Um, I, the funny thing was, I really liked the whole dream sequence, uh, at the beginnings, you know, a little bit of a spoiler, but of Vader having sort of like this dreaming, raging out on Palpatine and blaming him for everything. But now I'm seriously having trouble separating it from that Vader comic stuff we just <laughs> talked about. Like, I'm really having trouble because it's thematically so similar, uh, yeah. at, at, at pulling those apart now. But, um, the, f you know. I'm going to be honest. I have no idea what to expect. I don't know who he's hunting. Mm -hmm. um, the, the acting in it is okay. Palpatine gets a little touchy. Yeah. Like like Hansy with right, Vader, who right. is, which I'm like, I feel like no Palpatine always needs to have like like uh, like dead kitty paws, like yeah, the, the kitty right. you stepped on my paw limp wrist thing, right? You know, like Peg Bundy hands. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah, what Palpatine's. That's, so I was yeah. a little, I'm a, you know, I was a little off put by that, but that's fine. It's fine. I'll tell you what, though, I I know what they were going for there, and that's one of the most intriguing things that I find about this relationship between. Um, Anakin and Palpatine is that, I mean, it's, yes, it's a classic Sith master and apprentice relationship where the apprentice eventually has to kill the master. Right. But there is almost an affection there between them. Yeah. Or at it, least, at least Palpatine toward Anakin. It, yeah. And it's strange because he's got his hands on him. Like he's got his hands on his like clavicle, like the thumb rubbing the cali, the shoulder. And he's kind of <laughs> like, you must give in to your okay, hatred. You must use your that's rage. That's his daddy. That's I know. his daddy, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad daddy. Sep separate that minute. But think back to Revenge of the Sith, right? Right. When Palpatine goes to Mustafar and when he sees Anakin laying there as a quadriplegic now, mm -hmm. what's the first thing he or does? Or a nun to Pelagic, he, if you know what I mean. Yeah, like, right. <laughs> they, it's not that they didn't move, they weren't but, there. But when he sees him, Palpatine himself goes to him, kneels down in the ash, and actually puts his hand on his head. Yeah. So, I mean, to me, it, it rang true. Even though it might have been awkward in the film, mm -hmm. it still rang true to me. So, yeah, I, yeah. I like No, that. I didn't find that awkward at all, actually. That was, that was one of the more endearing moments. Yeah. Um, I, I, I liked this. I, re I really did. But the I think I would have liked it more instead of being part one of a story where Anakin's going to go Jedi hunting somewhere right. and also Palpatine's going to come along for the ride, apparently in super secret that it was just this, which is why I'm having sure. trouble separating it from the final issue of freaking Vader <laughs> because that's exactly what that was. It was just that like, here's the sure. culmination of all that. This fan film's exploring the same thing. Now, why, why is it happening on multiple fronts? I don't know because it's a lot it. more goddamn interesting to look at these details nowadays than to just drum up some rando new shit and not justify it in any way. Right. New shit's fine. You got to justify it. You got to ground right. it in something. Right. People are craving the grounding that got ripped away when the legends became legends. Right. We had all this electrical grounding gone. I just, I, th I think so. And we're getting in a broader discussion here, but I think I'm sorry, that's, that's where, no, no, no. And that's fine. I, that's where I think maybe. Disney and the new filmmakers have gone a little astray. I mean, they just really needed to hook us on these characters. But that's exactly why us... people love Rogue One. Well, that many other reasons. But Rogue One is grounding. The yeah. whole movie is grounding. Right. It's filling things in. Right. It's making a more complete picture rather than making the picture that you already had make less sense. Look, I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna just say this right now. The Jin Urso character. I love leaps and bounds above Ray. I'm sorry to say it, but I, I do. would not have agreed with you until Ep Eight. After <laughs> Ep No, after Ep Seven, I had enough intrigue about who Ray who she really is, was, right. and I, I would agree with that that sentiment. But yes. now, as things stand right now in 2019, I'm like Ray. Yeah, I don't, Ray. Ray I don't and Ep Eight needed that 
that Luke moment, like from Empire, where Luke, I mean, his whole world came down crashing around him in Empire. Yeah. I mean, it was, he was just left in shambles at yeah. the end of that. Whereas movie. her whole world just stayed as is. Yeah. And at the end, <laughs> you want to know your parents are there? Nobody, I guess, oh. you know, at the end I of that, slightly better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was gonna say at now the end she of, can lift rocks. I was gonna say yeah. At the end of that, she's lifting rocks and hugging people and slapping them on the ass on the Falcon and all that mm-hmm. shit. I mean, they were, they were <laughs> she just having to get her hand cut off, guys. <laughs> WTF? Seriously, she's got a complete first edition Jedi text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole set. Hot the whole set. The whole complete. set. Complete. There mm-hmm. you go. Even signed by Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> he used a little electrical current Probably. to sign his name. I don't know. <laughs> but I mean, back to the broader point there. I mean, but it's because, and and that's one. I mean, I I, I feel that way about Jen Erso in one movie than and you know over Ray over two movies, which we should know a lot more about her, and we don't. No, you know, yeah. it's because I felt like there was a full journey in one movie with Jen Erso. You know that we saw her as a child, and that you know she was separated from her family, and then and you didn't even read the book that was the supplement yeah, beforehand, sure. which you know still I kind of blame I kind of blame JJ because. I I still think JJ doesn't know yeah. the storytelling difference between the They're fact that going. with with Star Wars, with Star Wars and Empire, when Luke, when we got that big "No, I'm your father" reveal, it wasn't because there was a mystery that needed solved. It was because they're like, you know, we wrote it this way, but we could take this and do this, and it would change everything. And they're like, yeah, let's do that. Whereas with Ray, and I, and I almost, part of me almost pities Ryan Johnson for this. JJ took uh, Episode Seven and and said, "Hey, there's a bunch of mysteries, you guys." There's mysteries. Go. There's a bunch of mysteries. Solve the mysteries. You don't know what they are. Right. You don't know what they are. And we walked out of the going, we really want to know what they are. And then Ryan Johnson gets it. What am I supposed to just like fill in the choose your own adventure? Sure. I kind of feel for him because that's yeah, actually, yeah, no, that's actually kind of sloppy on JJ's but part. But see, okay. But see. The, the, and but again, JJ already getting, had it all planned again, out. Again, we're getting here broader here. Right. But I mean, that's what you get when you don't have someone at the top that insisted yep. Yep. that they have an overarching story in place yep. that the filmmakers come in and fill in the blanks. Yep. I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, they needed. I, I mean, all they needed to do at the beginning of this process was define point A and point B. I just I don't think you can build a trilogy on unanswered questions. I think you have to come up with you have to answer a question and and then ask a new question at, in your first installment and then answer a question and ask two more questions. Like, you know yes. what I mean? It has to yes. build right. rather than start right off with a bunch of questions and right. then say, eh, we'll get there. Right. You know, well, uh, Force, like you said, Force Awakens asked a bunch of questions. It sure did. And then Last Jedi pretty much said none of those said questions quit matter it. and we're done. And maybe, but maybe if it had, let's just say it wasn't Star Wars and it hadn't screwed over a lot of people's expectations, maybe Ryan Johnson has a point. Maybe we shouldn't be hanging our movies on the questions that weren't answered in the last movie. Maybe they should be able to stand on their work. We're, I mean, I'm sitting, you know, I'm playing the devil's advocate like crazy, but I'm being I mean, honest. Yeah. I'm being no, honest. That, that's fine. We're going. I, into ep nine going well, i don't know what to expect ep well, eight kind of closes stuff off maybe that's an argument for again that. i've said over and over that i don't blame brian johnson for the last jedi at all i yeah. blame i blame leadership at the top yeah you know because you know i think he made the movie that he was a, a you know told he could make so yeah. I, I i mean i it's just not a very good movie in my opinion but um <laughs> you know it just I, he did what he did because he was told he could do it. So, yeah. you know, it just is what it is. Anyway, again, this is because there was no overarching story yeah. going into this process. You know, I think they made a mistake. I mean, I but, that, but see, honestly, but I see, think that's they, the thing. When you go, we're making a trilogy and you don't have that plan. Right. You're right. screwing yourself. That's a problem. The reason why the original trilogy worked so well was because they built, they didn't have that plan. They had a concept. They had and they built on it and they changed it going in. Well, going as back, a cohesive unit right. of like agreeing that this was the best. Going back know. to that, I don't know. No, no, no. You're hitting on it. I mean, going back to that original trilogy. I mean, we all know all the drafts that it went through before we got to New Hope, right? Mm-hmm. So by the time he got to New Hope, he had so many story ideas floating around. Yeah. That by the time they got to Empire and Jedi, he pulled those. He pulled concepts from those original drafts. Yeah. And he made a, a neat little story out of it. Well, that never. That process never happened. For the sequel trilogy. So, yeah. anyway. But that, but that Vader fan, like, though, am I right? Yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> the Vader fan? The he's, Vader panel? He's, yeah. he's bringing us back, man. He's bringing us back. Yeah. I already tweeted at the author. 
Did and, you? And I posted a side by side image on the Showed him. <laughs> I did. I wanna, anyway, I, I want I, him to wake up and answer me again. My, my <laughs> I mean, my larger comment on this fan film, I, I appreciate and I like the fact that this has kind of brought everybody back around to just talking about Star Wars and and uh, yeah, these these broader concepts and and we're talking about we're talking about the story and the fiction again as opposed to being at each other's throats for stupid crap. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I that, I mean, to me, that was kind of the side effect that was interesting to me and and I appreciated. But uh, yeah, the fa- if you have not seen it, I highly recommend hopping on YouTube, looking up Star Wars Theory and checking out Vader Episode One: Shards of the Past. Yeah, it's a uh, it's worth of it's worth a view. And uh, yeah. like I said, six mil, almost six million views as we record. And that's only and, part uh, one. That's only part one. So yeah, good stuff there. Um, the last item I had for us actually.